In order to meet its development and poverty reduction goals, South Asia needs to make closing its huge infrastructure gap a priority. Within South Asia, access to infrastructure not only varies from country to country, as one might expect, but also within the regions in those countries. And further differences are seen when analyzing access to different types of infrastructure. Clearly, the challenge is to form a complete picture of which populations continue to lag in terms of access to infrastructure. This is done by analyzing infrastructure access in terms of space, income, and time. First, on a spatial level, the level of access to infrastructure within a given area can be measured. While leading regions generally have better levels of access to infrastructure, lagging regions don't necessarily have worse access everywhere. There are some poor areas that have levels of infrastructure access which are similar to those in rich areas. The income analysis indicates that the rich have easier access to infrastructure and that their connections tend to be of better quality. Finally, the time analysis indicates that the opportunities a child gets in life are largely dependent on the level of infrastructure they have access to during their early years in life. This is why providing some level of access is a start, even if those services aren't of the highest quality. It's also important to consider what types of services are a good fit for each population's needs. There are several options for addressing infrastructure inequality. For example, subsidizing new connections to infrastructure can enable the poor to get basic services. Broader approaches might focus on giving a voice to communities regarding where and what type of infrastructure services are built. When it comes to infrastructure access, analyzing the implications of the infrastructure gap in its various forms is critical as there is always a lagging population. Women, children, and marginalized social groups are some examples. Such analyses help identify these populations and better understand their uniqueness. This, in turn, informs how policies can best fit each population's needs. For example, focusing on increasing women's access to services as a way of increasing household income. If they're freed from chores like fetching water and gathering firewood, women will be able to use their time more productively. A focus on specific needs will yield higher economic returns for individuals as well as for society as a whole. But providing equal access to infrastructure is not just smart economics, it's also an issue of fairness. In modern South Asia, millions of children find life extremely difficult due to a lack of electricity or safe sanitation. To advance in school, learn a trade, or even entertain the hope that they will someday live a better life. This alone should be a compelling enough reason to act.